I'm CJ from 11 News. Israel is now administering a third dose of the coronavirus vaccine to people aged over 60. And it's been a world leader in vaccinating its residents with 60% of its population now fully vaccinated. Joining me to talk about the situation more is Professor Cyril Cohen. He works at Bar Ilion University in Tel Aviv, and he's also the member of the Advisory Committee for Clinical Trials on COVID Vaccines. Welcome, Professor. Now, what's the current situation in Israel regarding coronavirus and vaccinations? So right now in Israel, basically, we have vaccinated over 60, I would say 60 to 65 percent of the whole population, including children, et cetera, et cetera, uh, with two doses. Uh, the point is that we were the first to uh, immunize people uh, starting early December. By April, we were already at around 50% of the population vaccinated with two doses. Point is that recently the Delta variant you know, showed uh, itself in Israel uh, around a month and a half ago. And we're seeing, we, what we're seeing right now is a, is a flare. We're really seeing a, a lot of cases uh, since that time. It started very slowly and suddenly it went up as unfortunately some of us predicted. And right now what we're seeing is that we have a high number of daily infections, around 3,000 today. But on the other hand, in the hospitals, I would say that the situation is still manageable. We have around 200 people in severe conditions. The disease is a little bit different with, uh, with what we know uh, from, uh, from what we know uh, from January. Uh, it's, it is less severe, but on the other hand, numbers are still going up and therefore we have uh, recently decided uh, a few days ago to uh, open the vaccination for people over the age of 60 for a third dose. Why is that third dose needed? Are the vaccinations not as effective as they were? So what we are seeing right now is that the vaccine is still protecting to some extent from severe cases, two to three times more than if you're not vaccinated, if you are over the age of 60, five to six times more if you are below 60. So we do see an effect of the vaccines, but it's not enough. We are seeing, you know, uh, what we're seeing right now is a kind of, of uh, waning of the immunity, uh, especially if you were vaccinated early on. The, of, the official numbers show that if you were vaccinated in January, the chances of being protected uh, from the Delta variant, which is extremely contagious, uh, the chances of being protected from the Delta variant today are around 16%. This is not enough. Uh, in average, what we're seeing that chances from infection or protection from infection is going down. We still see, as I said, a, a good effectiveness in preventing severe disease between around 80%, but still this is not enough. And therefore we are seeing the pattern, we are seeing the numbers and we want to protect the most vulnerable population. So how safe is it to have that third dose? What research has gone into this? So I have to tell you that we do not have a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, data about that. What we have is the following. First, we know that there is a direct correlation between the number of the, you know, the amount of antibodies you have in your blood, neutralizing antibodies, and the possibility to resist an infection by coronavirus, especially, you know, by the alpha variant, which was here, you know, a few months ago, and also with the delta variant. So this is one thing. The second thing, we already started to give a third dose uh, around a month ago to people that are uh, immunosuppressed, you know, people that uh, have undergone, you know, graft, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So we have data from there that it is efficient in boosting their immunity. A third thing we know from abroad, from studies in France and also in, in the United States, that a third dose indeed can really boost the, uh, the level of antibodies. And the fourth thing, we know that people that vaccinated late compared to us, I would say, you know, like for example, in the UK, 
they were when we were at 50 percent you know with two doses they were only at around eight percent but you know they they uh, uh, they bridged the gap so what we know is that people that vaccinated late have a good uh, 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 efficacy against uh, the delta variant so we believe that we have to renew uh, the immunity or renew the 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 antibodies in those people and we believe that the third dose especially for people over the age of 60 because these are the most I would say uh, this is a population at risk, you know, over three quarters of the people in hospitals today uh, and in severe conditions uh, are people over the age of 60. So we believe that this is the right course to take. So you've got 3000 new cases a day. What percentage of those are people who are vaccinated? So we have, uh, I would say, as I told you, uh, what we are seeing is that I would say that around 45% uh, of those are uh, vaccinated and 55 are not vaccinated. Again, these are shifting every day. We are looking at those numbers. Uh, we do see today that uh, in terms of infection, not severe cases and infection, uh, uh, the effectiveness of the vaccine is uh, quite low for people vaccinated early. So are unvaccinated individuals getting hit harder by coronavirus than those who are vaccinated? Yeah, so, so we do see that clearly in younger people. Uh, we do see that, for example, in hospitals, uh, people that are not vaccinated below the age of 60 are much more, I would say, uh, uh, um, like to get you know, into severe conditions. We have death of people below the age of 60 that were not vaccinated last week, uh, a gentleman, you know, 30 year, uh, 38 year old, no comorbidities, uh, got the virus, uh, died, and he was not vaccinated. Why we're seeing a kind of a, a very good protection in hospital for younger people. When you, the more you get, or the more you go up in the age, you know, the more people are, uh, you know, over the age of 60, the less protection you see, unfortunately, but you have to remember that those people were the first to be vaccinated almost eight months ago. So what does life look like on the streets of Israel? I mean, here in Australia, we have some cities in lockdown. Are you surprised that we're still going into lockdown here? No, we, we you know, our last lockdown was in January and thanks to the vaccination, we were able to get out of that quite fast, okay? By March, everything was almost you know, reopened by June, we lifted all the regulations. Uh, unfortunately, uh, right now with what is going on in Israel, uh, you know, talks about, and these are really fresh news, talks about the fourth lockdown are on the table, unfortunately, uh, in a month or so, because uh, we are struggling in, in stopping the, uh, the Delta variant. So we do believe, you know, today in Israel, we are trying to live with COVID-19 meaning that almost everything's open. The only restriction we have is we have to wear our mask in closed environments. But besides that, you know, there's almost nothing. People are going abroad, people are coming back. Unfortunately, they are bringing with them a lot of infections. 10% of the daily cases are detected at the airport, which is a lot, because if you take into account that we are a population of 9 million people in Israel and that only I would say uh, uh, 30 or 40,000 people are coming to Israel, you know, every day. So they represent 10% of the daily infections. This is a very high number compared to the rest of the population. So we are encouraging people not to go abroad. I think that we need tighter regulations in terms, you know, uh, of, of, of traveling. Even if you're coming back, you have to, you have to put into effect a, a, a full lockdown for people coming back or, or a quarantine, you know, of a week or so, because so far there are no quarantine. And right now we are talking about, you know, uh, taking some measures, perhaps not a lockdown right now, but taking some drastic measures to try and stop the Delta variant. But it is very difficult to stop it. We do believe that at some point the whole population will need a, a, a third dose of vaccine in order to prevent uh, the spread of that variant. It's really interesting to see that Israel is one of the leaders in getting people vaccinated. However, you're still talking about going into lockdown. Um, here in Australia, we're talking about freedom incentives, pay incentives to get people vaccinated, um, and even vaccine passports. 
What's your opinion on that kind of split in society between the vaccinated and the unvaccinated? And is it worth getting vaccinated if people are still getting infected? I got you. This is a tough question. I mean, so the answer was clearer, I would say, a few weeks back because we could see uh, a real, I would say, effect at that time, you know, of the vaccine. Right now we do see an effect, but it is slowing down. Now this debate is coming back again on the table, you know, because of a, the possibility of, of a third dose. I do believe that it, there is some scientific logic uh, behind a, a, a green pass, what we call here a green pass uh, uh, for people that are vaccinated, because overall you're doing also something for society. I do believe that getting vaccinated is protect, protecting yourself, protecting your surroundings. We have data showing that the vaccine can slow down the transmission. That was, again, true for the alpha variant. Perhaps now with the delta variant, it is a little bit I would say, uh, uh, I don't want to say controversial, but people are looking into that. And I think that each country has a different uh, uh, approach to that. But I, I, I do believe that, again, if you are not vaccinated, still the chances that you uh, uh, will end up in severe conditions are higher than if you're vaccinated. And again, you're taking a risk for yourself. You are clogging, unfortunately, or you're helping clog the, uh, uh, the uh, hospitals, et cetera. I think that you need uh, uh, really to be careful if you're not vaccinated. And therefore, I think in that uh, optic, in that vision, the Green Pass is trying to tell you, listen, there is a way to protect yourself, get a shot. And we again, we're seeing that people that were vaccinated, for example, in April, you know, the vaccine is effective in protecting around 80% of the infections. So I mean that even if immunity is waning, uh, uh, we do see an effect uh, uh, of uh, protection of the vaccine. And it is very important on, I would say, the social level. But still, we are seeing that there is a, a, a glass ceiling, if I may say so, meaning that there are people that do not want to get vaccinated. We can't force, we are not forcing people to get vaccinated. There may be some incentives, but Israel has decided not to uh, have a vaccination campaign that is mandatory. And like other countries, like for example, in France right now, in Italy, you know, for example, people in the healthcare system have to get vaccinated, etc. So people, uh, so in Israel, we decided to go with a, a, a less, uh, I would say, a compelling uh, policy. But on the other hand, I do believe that you need to, to have some kind of, of reward, if I may say so, if you get vaccinated, helping yourself, helping uh, uh, the healthcare uh, system not to be overwhelmed and protecting your surroundings. So what do you think Israel has done that Australia hasn't? Uh, so, so at the peak of the vaccination in Israel, 2% uh, of the population were vaccinated every day. And even now, we just open, uh, you know, a third dose uh, for people over the age of 60 uh, in the first day out of one, 1 1.5 million of the people concerned. We already saw that 300,000 either got vaccinated or set up an appointment to get vaccinated, already 20% of the population. I think that in Israel, we have a lot of uh, uh, communication, a lot of explanation, I think that people in Israel realize that uh, they have some faith in science. Uh, 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 life is above all, and, and, and honestly, and they kind of understand that uh, as a vaccination is uh, the only strategy that may help us, you know, regain a, a kind of routine, you know, embrace your grandkids, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so Israel, you know, is a startup nation. We have, uh, we are leading, you know, in the field of science, etc. So I think that people are much more receptive to innovations in science, to uh, to uh, fighting again for your life. You know, people, we, we are accustomed, unfortunately, you know, due to the security uh, situation, we are accustomed to to crisis, uh, and and therefore I think that people are motivated. On the other hand, we still see, you know, pockets. 
and clusters of people in, with whom it is very difficult to deal when it comes to science and vaccination. I'm talking, for example, about the ultra orthodox, you know, very religious, you know, population in Israel, some of the uh, Arab communities. And there, the, uh, I would say the approach has to be different because, you know, those people are not really connected to the, you know, the general media. And there, for example, the approach is to go, and we did that ourselves. Uh, we, you have to go and talk to the head of the community. Uh, you have to explain, to show the data. And you know, from the moment he's convinced, he can convince you know, his community to get vaccinated. So it really depends you know, how to approach, you know, you know, what kind of society you have. You know, uh, it's homogeneous, heterogeneous, and how to approach that. You, know, you have to be uh, very, I would say, um, uh, uh, precise in how you uh, uh, approach the thing, depending on the type of population you are targeting. So what vaccines do you have in Israel and are they really safe? I mean, there's plenty of conspiracy theories floating around them. Do they have some merit? Yeah, okay. So uh, we are using only Pfizer right now and a little bit of Moderna. I mean, 99.9% .9 is, is Pfizer. Um, we conducted you know, negotiations early on, more than a year ago, with uh, AstraZeneca, Pfizer, Moderna to get vaccines at the end. You know, we had a contract with Pfizer uh, um, and we opted for Pfizer. In terms of conspiration theories, we see that it's international, unfortunately. Uh, uh, people are some, sometimes taking, you know, uh, what you say and trying to, to change, you know, as I present you as a specialist. I was presented as a Norwegian specialist, uh, believe it or not, you know, they're trying to, to, to do some uh, manipulations of what you're saying. Again, people that are saying that the spike protein is dangerous, but you're getting a, a full load of spike when you're getting infected. So what's the difference between you and me? So it's, it's, it's really misleading. I think that we have to fight uh, uh, conspiration theories. Uh, 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 it, at the end of the day, I mean, you have to remind yourself, you know, the people that are going to treat you are the doctors, are the scientists, the people that really care for you. So who should you listen? Dr. Facebook and Professor Instagram that have no, I would say, uh, 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 impact on your daily life besides you know, preventing or trying to prevent you from getting a vaccine, or the people, the specialists that really are caring for you, okay? That got vaccinated also, okay? So I believe that vaccination shouldn't be mandatory, but it should be based on real facts, real science, real medicine, and not some rumors. And uh, with that, I really hope that everyone will stay healthy and make the right choice. And I, I have to tell you, I have no conflict from, of interest with Pfizer or any other company. I'm not working for anyone. I don't get any uh, any money for uh, from anyone? So uh, uh, I really, I want to declare those uh, that I have no conflict of interest. So, how did the Delta outbreak start in Israel? You know, most of those cases are uh, children. Okay, forty to fifty percent of those cases are people below the age of twenty. But nevertheless, it's spreading. You know, it started from kids. Uh, unfortunately, the Delta variant made its way because people didn't keep quarantine, you know, coming back from abroad, kids went to school and it started from schools and then it spread to the whole population. Well, Professor, thank you so much for your time and stay safe.